Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. Back with the three amigos. Dion, how you doing? Howdy, doing great. Ready for round two. Oh, wow. You sound remarkably better. The first one you had the cold. Now the cold's gone. I have the oh my goodness. of this video will be better than the last video. <laughs> Dude, that is an impressive flask. How the hell do you get that in your shirt pocket? <laughs> Big shirt. I borrowed Big mats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only time you'll catch them in plaid. <laughs> that is awesome. That was a good one. Just woo, right on left field. Love that. Love that. Matt, how are you? I'm doing great. Super excited to be here. Love that we got a chance to speak with Graham and that he's watched some of your videos and hopefully he's humored. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> well, hey guys, I don't know if you've heard, uh, but we're in a recession. A recession has been redefined. I don't know if you've seen those memes flying around already. Mm -hmm. And according to Janet Yellen and President Biden, the recession's canceled. So what the hell is going on? Does it matter? Is it important? What do you guys think about this noise? Dion, we'll go to you first. Okay, I'll cover two things really quick. The first, a really smart guy that I follow on YouTube says, a recession is when your neighbor gets laid off. A depression is when you get laid off. Are you being impacted by this? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, and this is how I feel about any economic turbulence. So you have a pandemic, a stock market crash, an eviction moratorium, a recession, a depression, anything you want to call it. I feel the most nervous, scared, concerned for the person who has that one source of income. If you have a W-2, that's the person I'm worried about. Unemployment only lasts so long. If your company is not hiring in your field, competitors might not be too. So I think that the importance of this was the last few years. Have you taken the steps, done the work, added a couple of different cash flowing assets, whether it's a business, your stock portfolio, real estate, whatever you chose as your vehicle to get there, have you been doing the work? And if you haven't, you start today. You do the work because it's going to be bad in two years. There will be something in two years that everyone is talking about why this is the worst time ever. So increase those sources of income so that when these things happen, you sit back, you hold your flask and you think, oh, this sucks for almost everyone else. <laughs> but not today. For but not me. today. <laughs> there you go. I like that. I like that. Well, Matt, what do you think about all of this? Because uh, I'm sure you're seeing a lot of this, at least noise and chatter out there. What, do you, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I sitting by the pool waiting to see what's going to happen. Like, that's what I get to do. That's what you get to do. That's what mm -hmm. we get to do because we were prepared. While I appreciate Dion's concern about making sure that I have a side hustle on top of my W-2. See, this is why I can't let the W-2 go. So the, the good news, the good news is, is that this is what we've prepared for. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of people make too much noise. <laughs> I know that's how we, I know that's why you were late. I know <laughs> you were sleeping. I know yeah. it. And so I was like, look who's the pink Panther now. Um, but I think, you know, in all honesty, I look at it and anytime you see that turbulence coming, if you've done the right things, you're prepared for that turbulence. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like the Dwight Schrute mantra, which is <laughs> if, if I'm in trouble, you've all been dead for weeks. <laughs> like, so it's kind of that concept, which is yeah. I spent a lot of time, as I know you guys did preparing for such a thing. Mm -hmm. I think the funny thing and ironic thing about it is. I still bought a lot of deals this year. I'm, I've still done seven deals this year. Wow. Seven. It's July. I'm averaging one a month. And that wasn't the plan. The plan was every deal gets evaluated on its own merit. And if it's a great deal, then I put my money to work. Yeah. And all of those deals are over 20% returns. So I think that people should, yeah, I think that people need to stay, stick to the basics. We have no idea if, it's going to be a recession for four quarters or six. We don't know if it might even turn. Let's get nutty. Let's say it turns into a depression. Maybe, but evaluate the deal as it sits. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things going on. So, so again, I've been watching the consumer for a long time. That's kind of my ballywick for, for 30 years. I also have been following the media for probably 20 years ago. And it's really the, the merging of that that is kind of my economic background, right? if I were going to kind of summarize what I'm talking about. And I think it's about to get nutty. Because again, I think the economic numbers don't get better from here. 
I think the housing numbers get worse and worse from here. I think the economic get numbers. I think we spend endless and countless hours on CNBC, Bloomberg, MSNBC, CNN, talking about, hey, we're in a recession. No, we're not technically in a recession. <laughs> sure. All, it just it doesn't matter. Right. It, the word whether or not the Bureau of Economic Indicators call this a recession or not means nothing. We will be entering a recession at some point. Whether or not it's started in Q1, Q2, who the hell cares? Who the hell cares? I believe the actual recession started July 1st. It will not be called until February of 2023. And I think it's housing related. Yeah. Now you got my attention. Right? So it is, um, it is very interesting. Something that will come out 7 o'clock on July 28th is an interview I just completed with the editor and editor at Fortune magazine talking about housing. And we talked a lot about this. And basically, the overall housing market's about 15%. He shared that the housing single family homes by themselves are 5%. So he's like, hey, if you cut 50% out of transactions, all by itself, just that, you whack 2.5% of GDP. And then you use the negative wealth effect that could happen from a stock crash. He says, yeah. He says, historically, housing has led us into recessions. And he, he says, I think you're right. I think housing, I think housing is going to be the problem. So, um, yeah, it's, it's just, and then we, of course, get the Fed raising rates yesterday, which all three of us called. And guess what happened to mortgage rates today? They got better. Yeah. They went, they got yeah. better. How the hell does that happen? Dion, any thoughts on that? So I did a video a couple of weeks ago on why lenders might lower rates when the Fed in, when the Fed raises rates. And I was just in the Seattle Investors Club Mastermind where that was one of the topics. And a lender brought up, the lenders are more confident that the Fed is, <clears throat> sorry about the voice, that the Fed is more serious about controlling inflation. So when they do, and, and we're, we're, we've been mind wiped, these are not the droids you're looking for, that the largest Fed increase in rates since the 80s that happened. Now we're just going, oh, they did it again. Like, mm -hmm. like, it's just that we expected it, right? We called for it. We expected it. So the lenders are confident in the Fed's desire to control inflation. So that made mortgage rates better because lenders lend on margin and they consider lending fear as a factor as to whether those go up or down. So when we have quantitative easing and the Fed is holding on to assets on their balance sheet, margin will be compressed because the risk is on the Fed. When the Fed talks about pushing things off their balance sheet, which didn't come up in today's discussion as much. Lenders aren't taking or assuming most of that, that risk. Mm -hmm. So we have that compression of the margin they're lending. So even though the Fed increases rates, lenders were able to maintain or lower rates in some cases, which made them better for the consumer. Yeah, people need to realize that that mortgage rates, and Matt, the mortgage guy, tries to educate us every week on this, and he has a playlist on the channel, as you two know. He's like, when, when, he's like dude, this has been priced in for four weeks. What, what was actually priced in was a 10% chance they'd do 100. So what backed off was they only did 75. So they actually gave back some rate increases. And then what I look at is the 10-year. Last time when we got a CPI of 9.1, which is five weeks ago, I think. Was it five weeks or whatever? Some time ago. It's about that. Yeah, what a two, three, I don't know, I forget. So we have so much inflation now, I forget when it happened. Uh, mortgage rate, or maybe it was when we got the eight, nine, I think that's what it was. The 10 year spiked to 3.49, which is the highest in the last couple of years. It's now at 2.74. Think about that. We've had 150 basis point move in the fed funds and the rate is down 75 basis points. What do you think of all that, Matt? Um, yeah, I think that everyone's recognizing that the fed is a credible threat, hmm. right? They're saying what they're going to do. They're doing what they're going to say. And, you know, I think that I think more rate raises are coming. I think that margins have to trim in, um, you know, depending on I've talked to a lot of mortgage guys, you know, three or four this week. And I think that's a lot for a week. And they're all, <laughs> it is. Like, they're all like, yeah, but like business is kind of down. Like if you're not shopping your mortgage right now. Oh, yeah. You know, when you're trying to buy something, if you're not hard shopping, you are missing out because there are different banks with uh, different brokers with different products and programs that are directly correlated to the health of the bank offering them. Yeah, no, absolutely you know, right. There are banks out there that are plenty healthy. They'll do just fine. And so they're still out there and they're now out there in force 
trying to actually sell loan products because they need to, they want to increase their balance sheet. They yeah, one, one of my followers was quoted by their bank, whatever their bank is, I'm guessing where they have their money, 6.75 for a 30 year fix, 750 credit, whatever, right? Basic loan. Um, they went to another mortgage broker on this, in, on this channel and got 5.99. Say everything's oh. the same. They just shop. The, they just shop the rates again. You gotta just, gotta I can't, I can't believe how many people don't shop their rate. They like get in with like a mortgage broker and they're just like, yeah, that's good enough. No, what are you talking about? If you don't refinance, you'll be paying that for 30 years. Is that relationship worth 37 30 years bucks to you? Yeah. I have it, an extra qu three quarters of a point. No, thank you. Yeah, it is not. So it's like, look, look at that. And I, and I really want to encourage people to take the time to do that. I actually called my bank this morning. They gave me a rate and I actually said to her verbatim, we're in a recession now. I don't know where that rate came from. Me and you are lower. Laughing. Yeah. And she started laughing at me. And I just said, we are, we are in a recession. And so <laughs> I will call you back tomorrow. And I hope that there's a better number. There you go. So, uh, Dion, you want to wrap this up for us and bring us home? So I'm going to steal from one rental at a time. As we're in a recession, remember that there's a bunch of fear porn out there. A lot of videos that get more views because people talk recession, crash, real estate crash. <clears throat> Sellers are hearing that too. Mm -hmm. And so take Mike's advice. When you're making your offers and you've been watching days on market, so you've got a property that's on market longer than what was expected. So you're hoping that this is a motivated seller because if they're not motivated, they'll just ignore you. But if they are motivated and they want to sell, it's not just price that you can negotiate. You can negotiate closing. You can negotiate all the all your terms are just as important as the interest rate by get. down, rate by down. So rate by down, concessions, um, repairs to be done. You Don't have the negotiating it. power because they're hearing the fear just like the buyers are. Yeah, absolutely. And Matt? I mean, I think that's dead on. I think that the market has shifted. It's now absolutely 100% a buyer's market in most markets, not all. Um, but in most markets, it's a buyer's market. And just be patient. One of the things that I talked to a couple of folks just in, in chats last night. They were like, yeah, I really feel like I can get my next one. Whoa, 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 whoa. You got time. Take a breath, relax. If the numbers are blowing your socks off, do it. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Do it. If they're not blowing your socks off, then you know what? How much money? Do you have that much money? Were you going to do four deals at the same time? Yeah. No. What would make you think that? That's the way you're acting. Yeah, so Exactly. <laughs> Bring it back. Slow down. Slow down. You only, you only need one. You only need one. Yeah, I love that. Guys, you are amazing. The three amigos. Uh, we do a live stream on Sundays at 1130 Eastern. Yes, I do. And Tuesdays at 4 Pacific yep. and Saturday at 8 a.m. Look at that. I got them all. Pacific. Pacific. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And soon we're going to pick a time to do a live stream of the three amigos on one rental at a time. That you know, host, or you know what? Host. Let's see if the audience wants that. Do you guys want a three amigos live for 60 minutes where you ask us questions? I don't think you want it. If you do, you have to leave comments below. Let's see. Thanks guys. Ciao.